Okay, so I want to have a little heart to heart right here at the end of the day. I'm fixing to shut her down and go to sleep, but I wanted to have a heart to heart because this has been on my mind, on my on my heart a lot lately here. Um, and it's just the idea of death. And I know this is not the most popular thing to talk about. And it's not the most fun thing to talk about. And it's not something that's going to get you hyped up and go uh, run through a wall necessarily. But something that you got to talk about. You got to think about it. Hey, what's up, my IG people? Hey, you got any dreams today? You got any goals? I'll tell you some of mine. Uh, I want to try to get 15,000 steps on my Apple Watch. Also, I want to try to burn 2,000 calories because I got a little thing yesterday that said this month the challenge is to try to burn 20,000 calories for the month. So your boy is going to try to try to get close to double that. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but uh, hey, it's worth a shot. You got to have a dream, got to have a goal to shoot for. Try to drink about a gallon of water too. So that's just a couple of fitness goals. Uh, what kind of goals you got? I want to hear them. I want to hear them and I want to see you pursuing your dreams. Also, if you haven't been keeping up, I've been I've started a YouTube uh, vlog here lately, and I've got a new video that's fixing to be live. All you gotta do is go to the link in my description, and at the top it'll see new, new it'll say newest YouTube video. Just click that; you can actually watch the YouTube video inside there without ever leaving Instagram. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. And why wouldn't you just go ahead and subscribe while you're there so you can get them every time they go live? I'm doing them every day at this point in my life, so we'll see how it goes. Subscribe today. I had to deliver a car somewhere and I decided I just walked back like not that far away but it's next to a pretty busy road <laughs> probably not the safest idea I've been checking over my shoulder not to worry my wife's gonna watch it freak out huh? it'll be alright I'm alright I got a big old curb right here beside me so it'll be good <laughs> hey gotta get them steps in gotta get them calories in you know what I'm saying Came and work out, got me a little, got me a little uh, one mile warm up. Looking forward to getting in here. I've been waiting all day. I usually work out in the morning, but Bo and uh, Ezra are not here and Ellie, so I decided to come after work today. So about to hit it right here, right now. I got a long way to go to hit my calorie goal, so better get on it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I want to have a little heart to heart right here at the end of the day. I'm fixing to shut her down and go to sleep, but I wanted to have a heart to heart because this has been on my mind, on my on my heart a lot lately here. Um, and it's just the idea of death. And I know this is not the most popular thing to talk about. And it's not the most fun thing to talk about. And it's not something that's going to get you hyped up and go uh, run through a wall necessarily. But something that you got to talk about you got to think about it and so i personally think about death often uh think about a legacy i think about especially now that i have kids i think about like uh, and i talk about it a lot so you probably heard me talk about you know leaving a legacy um being an ex setting an example that i want my kids to follow whatever um but you know when you really think about death it can be a little bit frightening, even if you're not scared to die. You, you know, if you're like me, like you love life and you want to celebrate life and enjoy life here on Earth. Um, even though as Christians we know that life after Earth is going to be better for us, it's still we 
all we know is here and now and we want to enjoy that um here and now if you're like me and so um it it, it really it hit me hard the other day because there's um a guy named paul in in my hometown of tuscaloosa who um passed away recently super unexpected has a, a sweet wife um, I knew Paul, and uh, I mean, not super well, but I knew him, and uh, it's just, it's weird when someone close to your age, super unexpected, um, it just, it causes you, us to just stop and think about our own life. It should, at least. You know, they say that the greatest invention of life is death, because it, it forces, every time someone you know passes away, it, 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 it forces you to stop, at least for a few minutes. And evaluate the problem is so often we just move on past it in a few weeks and it's like it never happened and I'm not like that I, I think about it long and it, and it, it, it lasts it lingers with me for a long time in fact I wanted to share something with you tonight from this was when I was I'm 30 now eight years ago I wrote this book you choose and it's how your choices today affect you tomorrow and I wanted to share I had a uh, chapter in here and I just want to share it with you and I, I was going to talk more about it but I thought you know what this is actually I read over it again tonight it's like dude this is exactly what I'm thinking right now so I want to share it with you so hang in there with me for just a few minutes okay this is chapter seven choosing to use your time wisely and I have a quote life is short so live it well for someday soon you'll have a story to tell I start this chapter with a few lines from a poem that has greatly impacted my life. I first read it in middle school, and I've often used it in messages to youth groups. I even used it in my high school graduation speech as I implored my classmates to live their lives to the fullest. The poem is called The Dash by Linda Ellis. Referring to a man speaking at the funeral of a friend, Ellis writes, He noted that first came the date of her birth, it spoke the following date with tears. But he said, what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. And I'm going to challenge you. Go, when, when you're done watching this video, go look up that poem and read it all the way through. Copyright rules didn't allow me to put the whole thing in the book when I was writing it. So anyway, you see, our date of birth is important and so is our death date. But what really matters is the life between those two points, the dash. I can remember reading this poem in its entirety as a middle schooler and it gripping my heart. I realized the truth of it and the importance of living my life in such a way as to be a difference maker. I wondered, what would those who know me say if I were to leave this world today? In other words, if my funeral were today, how would those who knew me best remember me? Oftentimes when someone dies, People try to say nice things about him or her to the family. My hope is that people would say those nice things, but also that they would all be true and not just some nice gesture to make my family feel better. People always say, well, you only live once, so you might as well live it up hardy hard. I beg to differ. I think of it more like this. You only live once, but if you live it right, once is enough. When you live your life chasing worldly passions, you often end up in a world, I mean, in a worse position than where you started. So really, you were not living it up, you were living it down. To me, living it up is looking up and getting up from the mess you're in and choosing to live for Christ. Will it be easy? Of course not, but nothing worth having comes easy. Will you look back one day and be grateful for choosing Christ over drugs? You certainly will. I've never heard of a 90-year-old man sitting on his front porch in his rocking chair saying things like, well, I sure wish I would have smoked a little more weed when I was younger. Or, yeah, I had a good life. I sure am glad I slept with 10 different women before I married my wife. No, it is always the other way around. The other way around. People wish they had done the right thing and had not always taken the easy way. My challenge to you is this. No matter where you are in life, Choose from this day forward to make every day count. Choose to make the most of every opportunity. We each get 86,400 seconds in a day. Invest them in worthwhile things. Whatever you invest your time in will bring you a return, either positive or negative. Once those seconds are gone, 
you can never get them back. But don't fret over the seconds you have already lost. Instead, rejoice over the seconds ahead of you that you get to make wiser decisions. A few years ago, I got to go to Disney World in Orlando with a group of kids who had never been before. They could not wait to get there. They were dreaming of riding roller coasters and touring the parks. While I was there as a chaperone, I have to admit that something changed inside me when I walked into Disney World the first day of the trip. There were big signs all over the entrances that had two words printed on them. These two words were the theme of Disney World that summer. They were simple words, but words that made me think hard. The sign said, Celebrate Today. I started thinking about all the special days in life that we celebrate, such as birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, Easter, and the 4th of July. I thought about how there really aren't very many special occasions that we celebrate throughout the year. Then I thought about how different life would be if I celebrated every single day. Each day is a gift, and that is something worth celebrating. No matter how old you are, life is fragile. I remember the first funeral I ever attended. I was six years old, and my papa had just died from brain cancer. I couldn't completely comprehend why my papa was in that big box when only a short time before he was helping me reel in a fish at the cabin. It was not long before that that he had been making mud pies with me. I remember riding around on my pedal John Deere tractor that he gave me for Christmas. Now, suddenly, he was gone. My heart was broken as I saw death for the first time. I knew then that life is fragile. We never know when our time is up. Papa lived a great many days, but I also went to a funeral my sophomore year of college for a former baseball teammate of mine. This one was different because this guy was my age. It hits a little closer to home when someone your age passes away. Again, it is a reminder that life is fragile. I don't mean to be morbid and I don't want to scare you too much, but I just want you to understand that we never know when our time on earth is finished. Since we don't know that time, we must live every day to the fullest. We must leave no stone unturned. We must be prepared, first and foremost, spiritually, knowing that we are in our right relationship with God. As the Bible says in Mark 8, 36, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? And after first nailing down that foundational relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you can then begin to love others the right way. Then you can live your life to the fullest, making the most of every opportunity to encourage those around you. Don't live to impress others, but live to encourage others. My senior year of high school, I wrote a song for my graduating class. And one line says, Time flies by, the seasons are full of change. So enjoy every moment and cherish every single day. Be careful not to allow yourself to think thoughts like, well, I will straighten up once I finish high school, or as soon as I get married, then I will settle down, or whenever we have children, I will begin to learn what it means to be a godly man. No, no, no. Please don't fall into that lie from the devil. He will try to keep you on the wrong path as long as possible. 1 Peter 5, 8 warns us saying, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The longer you are away from God, the better off the devil will be in his lies and schemes. Use this precious gift of time to live your life to the fullest now while preparing for your future. Don't think your world will suddenly change forever for the better when you get married if you haven't prepared yourself to be a godly husband or wife. Don't think you'll suddenly begin to work harder just because you got a good promotion at work. Learn now. Love now. Live now. Celebrate today. Questions to consider. One, do you see the importance of living every day to the fullest? Two, how different would your life look if you began to celebrate every single day? Three, are you willing to get your life right with God now instead of waiting for a more convenient time? Four, what kind of difference could you make 
you begin to use your 86,400 seconds a day more efficiently. And finally, go read The Dash by Linda Ellis at lindaellis.net. Now, I just want to encourage you guys. Look, it's not fun. It's not going to be a fun time to just sit around and think about your funeral. But you need to do it. It's healthy. In a healthy way. Think about death in a healthy way so that you can then back up from your funeral in your mind, back up to today, and choose to live your life in such a way that when that day happens and it comes immediately, you don't know when it's coming. Your time expires and in the blink of an eye, it's gone. You think everything's fine. You go to sleep and you don't wake up. You think everything's fine. You're just driving to work and a car car crash happens. Again, I don't I'm not trying to use scare tactics, but I want your life to to be full of gratitude later because you're making wise choices today. I want my life to be full of gratitude later because I'm making wiser choices today. And so whatever that looks like for you, I don't know, but you do. So you have to take the time, take the time to sit still. Maybe it's before you go to bed, like I'm about to do right now, and just stop and think and pray and say, ask God, what do you want me to do? What can I do differently than the way I'm living now? Um, And you just stop and think about your future, and then you come back to today and you live your life in such a way that you get the end result that you're after. It's the same way with every decision that you have to make in life, every dream and every goal that you have. You you have that end picture in mind, and then you come back to today and you live it. That's what I've been saying. The choose, dream big, choose wisely, live freely. Right? You're dreaming big. You're dreaming about the the day that you meet Jesus, assuming that you have a relationship with Him, and then you come back to now and you make choices every day, here and now, that line up with that vision. Okay? Hey, you guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Again, I'd love to hear what you guys want from these videos. Um, I'm, I'm doing it for you, but I'm also doing it for myself and forcing myself to think and think out loud and, uh, and put stuff out there because I've been holding on to a lot of stuff for a long time. And so hopefully you found some encouragement here and, uh, and it impacts your life in a positive way. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Until then, be great. Dream big. Choose wisely. Live freely.